Tonight we're setting up the Celestron Advanced VX mount with the Edge HD 8 inch telescope on there. Uh, this is a beautiful system for setting up for doing astrophotography and lots of aperture for visual use as well. So the first thing that uh, you can see that we've done is we've set out our tripod here for the mount. We've set our alignment pin as close to north as what we can determine here during daylight hours and we'll be doing the finer adjustments in a little bit once we can see Polaris. And then uh, our little pocket level that we've used here to be able to, uh, to get the tripod nice and level. So that's kind of our initial setup uh, with the tripod. And uh, now we have the, uh, the VX mount uh, that uh, came out in uh, 2013. Uh, beautiful little mount, handles that 8 inch Edge HD scope really quite nicely. And what you'll find is that uh, we kind of are going to leave it somewhat snug because uh, there'll be the adjustments when we come to polar alignment. So just kind of nice and snug there. The next item that goes on will be our counterweight. And uh, we'll just get that onto the counterweight shaft and our little safety piece there. So if somebody happens to loosen that or it comes loose in the night, that counterweight will not drop in your toe. It'll just fall to the end of the shaft. And then if um, you want to take a look at the mount, there is... Uh, a latitude adjustment scale and here at All-Star Telescope we're at 51 degrees so even though we can't see the North Star yet we can uh, make our adjustments here. There I'm just uh, moving it up and we'll leave it there at about uh, 51 degrees and again we'll be doing our fine adjustments for polar alignment later. We've installed uh, the optional polar scope uh, here and uh, have to take the cap off there Turn our declination this way so that we'll be able to see straight through. So here's the uh, Celestron Edge HD uh, 8 inch optical tube. Uh, very, very sharp optics. And uh, we're going to just push it up there. We'll have to do a balance once we get the camera and a few other things attached to it. Uh, if you might want to just take a little look here at the top before we add some more things. The finder scope that comes with the uh, Edge HD is this one. But what we've done is we've converted it to our auto guider, so there's not a lot of extra weight here on the top. So we've taken out the eyepiece, we've installed the Orion Starshoot auto guider with an adapter ring and uh, converted this to now be our guide scope. In order to do our star alignment, we've added the red dot finder here, the Celestron um, star finder pointer, and that will allow us to be able to do our alignment when we get set up here in the dark. One of the key items for doing excellent astrophotography with this system is the Celestron uh, 0.7 reducer lens, which they came out with in the summer of 2013. This system is really optimized for the um, digital single lens reflex cameras with the APS size chip, such as the Canon 60D or DA, uh, the T2i to the T5i cameras. And, uh, so you'll be able to uh, use those cameras, uh, a Nikon or Sony with this system as well. After putting the focal reducer on, we need to put the photo adapter uh, for the proper spacing for our uh, DSLR camera. And onto that will go the Canon T-Ring because we're using a Canon camera tonight. And uh, the final item, of course, is going to be your DSLR camera. Of course, to change the orientation for the, uh, the camera, we just loosen that orange ring, tighten it up, and uh, we can do it that. Later on in our frame and focus, we'll try to adjust the camera to get the best uh, composition of the target that uh, we'll be shooting for the evening. So, um, so that's pretty much uh, the whole optical train. Tonight we're, uh, we're using the uh, Celestron 5 amp AC adapter, which uh, we'll connect to it. And this is all uh, set up that can be done during the daylight hours, before it's dark, before we can see any stars. It's kind of nice to do that during the daytime so that uh, you can kind of see how everything fits together. What we'll do at this time is uh, check the balance on it and uh, note that uh, it's pretty heavy towards the back end. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, push that optical tube up a little bit farther and uh, try to achieve uh, a little better balance with that. So again, loosen that off. It's always nice to stand behind the scope so that uh, you know that you've got a, a, a good hold on it as you're tightening that up. Give it a good shake before you go and now it looks like we're in balance uh, with our declination. 
Uh, again, there's a little safety piece here. We try to remember to put those things in. Uh, hopefully nothing will come loose, but uh, precaution is always in good order. It's balanced in declination. Now we're just going to check our right ascension. And again, it's a little heavy there. We like to balance or change our uh, uh, counterweight when it's uh, all horizontal here so nothing slips up and down. We'll just uh, pull our counterweight out there almost as far as it will go and uh, we'll check to see that uh, we're balanced in right ascension and it's looking pretty good. Uh, once it, it's balanced in right ascension and declination you should be able to loosen off those clutches and virtually move that telescope any place that you want. And during the daylight hours, what we'll do is uh, we'll just make sure that our red dot finder uh, over here is lined up with the telescope so that uh, when we start doing our star alignment that we know that uh, everything is positioned properly. So we'll just find uh, something far off there in the distance. And uh, again, nicely we can move it all by hand at this point, uh, not having to use the motors to, uh, to operate it. And, uh, We'll just tighten up our, uh, our clutches here. Uh, we'll turn on our little red dot finder there and uh, take a look uh, through the camera to see uh, what we're pointed at. The other uh, good thing about getting it set up at this time of the day is uh, getting it focused. So um, we're just gonna look at the horizon, which um, will be pretty close to the, what focus will be when we're looking at a star and uh, get it very close to being focused. We'll just uh, basically leave it at this point. We're gonna put a, a lens shade on later to keep the dew off the front cover and stray light away from the scope. But uh, this is pretty much what you can do in terms of getting things set up during the, uh, the daytime hours. One of the other things that uh, we can do during the daytime hours is get our uh, situation, our location and uh, time set. So uh, we'll just uh, do that here and we'll be able to get that set. So the, the time uh, is uh, 20 hours. So we'll just put in 20 hours and uh, 49 minutes. And this will mean that we'll leave the power on from this point on. And so we enter that. We're still on daylight savings time. And uh, our time zone is Mountain USA. And uh, today is actually the fourth day of September. So 0409. 2013 and we'll hit the enter button. Uh, we're going to be doing a two-star alignment but I just want to go back and show you that when you do um, get the time set up if you hit the back key one more time it brings up your latitude and longitude. So uh, we're going to be at 114 um, in terms of our longitude and uh, it asks if it's east or west so uh, west comes up and then our latitude is going to be uh, 51 degrees north. And so there we have our latitude and longitude. We're going to do our polar alignment now that it's dark enough that we can see Polaris. And so the first thing that we'll do is we'll uh, swing our declination axis there. That opens up the shaft so that we can look through the polar scope and up through here. The second step that we'll do is we'll release the right ascension clutch. And, uh, and then we'll be able to move the, uh, the scope in this direction, uh, what we'll want to do is move the scope so that when you're looking through the polar scope, the Big Dipper and Cassiopeia are in the same position in the sky as what they appear in the polar scope. So uh, there's no uh, real easy way to do this other than to get down on your knees, perhaps put your tripod up as high as you possibly want to, and uh, get down and look through the polar scope. There is an adjustment for focus on the polar scope, and tonight we actually have um, set it up fairly closely to being polar aligned, but we'll need to make some adjustments here. It looks like um, we'll need to just move our right ascension a little bit so that we can line up uh, the Big Dipper with where uh, the Big Dipper is in the sky. And uh, there we've got it. It appears that it's at 10 o'clock. So we're just going to lock that into position and start adjusting our uh, sideways and up and down motion to bring Polaris into the circle uh, that's at about 10 o'clock on the, the larger circle. So I have to go up a little bit here. So again, we're loosening on one side and, uh, and uh, tightening up on the other. And we also want to make sure that we tighten up our, uh, our mount to the tripod. So there we have a, a very good polar alignment. There's uh, 
applications on the iPhone and 